I don't know if you've been paying attention to this. There's a guy named Brett Weinstein. There's a guy named Sam Harris. Mm -hmm. they, they have good representation, <laughs> I would say, of uh, of two sides of a perspective on vaccines. So from Sam Harris's perspective, it's obvious that everybody should uh, get vaccinated and it's irresponsible to not get vaccinated. I think he represents a lot of people's belief in that. And then uh, Brett is t talks a lot about ivermectin, but also talks about uh, a hesitancy towards the vaccine for for people who are healthy, who are people who are younger, that kind of thing. And uh, saying we should consider long-term effects of uh, the vaccine in making this calculation. What do you make about this conversation? Some of it happens on Twitter. <laughs> some of it happens in the space of podcasts. Um, do you pay attention to this kind of thing? What's your role in this? What, what do you hope is the way to resolve this conversation? Do you think it's healthy? Well, a conversation is always healthy, but to make definitive statements is not because it suggests you have information that you don't have. So, um, you know, we talked about long-term effects. I think you need to balance those versus long-term effects of the disease and you can make your decision. I don't think you need to tell everybody to get vaccinated. I think you need to present the case. You say, here, we made good vaccines. Here are the safety profile. Here's the risk benefit balance, and you should decide. You're a smart person. You should decide. Um, now, companies are going to do differently, right? Companies may say you have to be vaccinated to work here. My employer, Columbia, said we have to be vaccinated to work in the fall. And if you want to be a student, you have to be vaccinated. So you decide whether you want to go or not. But the the idea that um, you should make a decision based on long-term effects there is no evidence, right? So how can you make a decision when we don't have evidence, whereas we do have evidence that there are long-term effects of getting COVID? So I don't think that's a fair argument, and it just makes people scared to say that. Yeah. But on the other hand, for someone to say it's a no-brainer and to denigrate people for not being vaccinated, that's not the approach either because they're going to dig in and yeah. say, I'm not doing this because you tell me to, right? I think the middle ground is to say, take a bit of both, and say, here are the potential issues, and here are the benefits, and this is what I would do, and you have to just decide on your own. I'd leave it to them. i say, you decide, and if you don't want to, you know, it's up to you. You don't have to get vaccinated. And you'll probably get infected at some point, and maybe you'll be okay. <laughs> but here's the best available data, and it looks like the vaccines are pretty, uh, a pretty damn smart solution. They seem to work. I think you tell people what you did, Right. And present both sides calmly, and I think digging in, you know, as a, like in a debate, I don't think that's terribly useful. Yeah. So that's my view. I, ch I mean, people come to me all the time and ask me, "What? I'm worried. What should I do?" And I say, "What are you worried about? Let's talk about it and go through it calmly." And if they want to still take ivermectin, I say, "It's fine. It's your choice." Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. I love that. I, I love that's the way you think. 